Right now, in the distant year of 2023, the citizens of Earth spend a lot of time on the internet. And with that comes finding videos, pictures, websites, and most importantly to the topic I'm going to be talking about today, music. I myself am one of those people who like to search the far corners of the internet to find possibly niche things that many people don't talk about. A few weeks ago, I stumbled across an album called Me and My Monkey on the Moon by Mayumi Kojima, released in December 2000. And no, no, it's, it's, it's not that Kojima. It's a compilation of singles and unreleased tracks from Mayumi's discography. I decided to give this album a quick little review because when I was trying to look around for more stuff regarding this album, there weren't many people talking about it, at least in the States. So I'm going to be giving you a quick little rundown on why this very fun and charming collection of songs needs to be enjoyed and shared to more people. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the track list 1 through 21 right now. Track number one is Kakon Saran Syo. This track starts us off with a piano and bass heavy jazz number with an accompanying animated music video. The translated lyrics have to do with a marriage agency, with her telling her and somebody else's perspective of finding the right suitable person throughout the song. It's quite swingy and I enjoy it a lot and I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Track number two is Cecile No Blues. Slowing down a bit, we now get a low-tempo cabaret swing track with hints of oboe, pizzicato violin, cymbal, and piano. The lyrics seem to be about a plan that she must have screwed up once, but will never again after she made the mistake. It's an alright song, 7 out of 10. Track number three is Koi no Gokorak Tokyo. Next up, we have a really fun poppy sounding tune, including vibraphone and acoustic guitar. Although the song may sound happy, the lyrics tell a story about a relationship she had, where at points she felt completely hopeless. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. Track number four is DB Dabi Da. This song keeps us into the fun, playful tone with the bouncy harpsichord and bass line. The lyrics are about how she became stoic with her experiences of life and relationships. It's still a pretty fun listen. Eight out of ten. Track number five is Sensei no Kaniri. In this song, we have a fun galloping horse trot beat with an acapella chorus for the bridge. The lyrics are about being a teacher's pet and what comes of that with the other students. This one is another one of my favorites on the compilation, a 9 out of 10. Track number six is Shortcake no Samba. Next up, this short poppy little samba is full of clicks and Jerry Paper-esque synth and organs. Even the lyrics are very straightforward, just talking about how she'll enjoy some shortcake with some coffee later in the evening. This is a fun little tune, but nothing great. 7 out of 10. Track number 7 is Manatsu no Umi. This song starts off sounding very mischievous with a fun minor harpsichord, but the chorus brightens it up to a happy sound again. The lyrics are about a date that has adventures, but it has unexpected stumbles and inconveniences. I think this is a really fun track and I really like it. 8 out of 10. Track number 8 is Anoko no Kare. I think the very distinct trait of this song is its heavy bass line, but to be honest I'm not too into it. The lyrics are about how she observes a relationship between two other people and criticizes both of them, acknowledging that they both have their flaws and forecomes. It's not too bad, but it's probably the worst one so far. 6 out of 10. Track number 9 is Hasukoi. 
Being a sucker for bossa nova music, this melodious flute and drum track is one of my other favorites on this album. Also, a fun fact that this song was apparently used for a Game Boy commercial in 2003 for Super Mario Advanced 4. Mario powers up for Super Mario Advanced 4, Super Mario Brothers 3. Only for Game Boy fans. Looking at these lyrics, I honestly have no idea what they're talking about, but it sounds pretty good either way. I'll give this an 8 out of 10. Track number 10 is Oshabari Oshabari. This super swingy track with a lot of percussion and a walking bass line has a lot to bring to the table, and it surprised me with its tone after the last couple of songs. I looked everywhere online for the lyrics, but I found almost nothing. I found a link to hiphopvomit.blogspot.com, but it seems to be complete gibberish. Plus, I don't think those are the actual words she sang. It's a really fun song, though, so I'll give it an 8 out of 10. <laughs> Track number 11 is Cecil Cut Blues. Going from a loud, brassy show tune mood, we transition into a slow beboppy pop genre, heavily set on vocals, bass, and the quick electric guitar strums. The lyrics seem to just be about her admiring somebody's bodily traits, which seems that this might be a sensual sort of song within the words. It's really jazzy, but it's not my favorite, but I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Track number 12 is Twist Number 1. Introducing the scatting element to the compilation, this song doesn't have official lyrics, but it does have vocal scatting from start to finish with some nice jazzy Teen Titans-esque rhythm. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Track number 13 is Mayo Naka No Party. Starting with the loud flute and percussive samba, we get to hear accompaniments of electric guitar, bongos, and shaker too. The chorus giving more mellowness with the chords later on is a really nice touch. I really wish I had perfect understandable lyrics for this album, but this song's translations are so confusing. Which this one is apparently about someone playing a harp, someone's hand, and, I don't know, something about a, a biscuit. It's an alright song though, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Track number 14 is Watashi no Koibito. This next track is a nice calming bossa nova track with acoustic guitars, rim shots, and open hats from a drum machine. After a while it becomes a bit stale, but it isn't too bad. It seems that the lyrics make this song out to be a normal love song writing about their partner and them. It's pretty okay, I'll give it a 6 out of 10. Track number 15 is Fusen. Fusen, also meaning balloon, is a really childish and bouncy song with nice choppy clavichord, electric guitar, and bass. This is another song where across the internet I couldn't find lyrics, I apologize. I like this song though, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Track number 16 is Drop. Coming out in 1999 as a single maxi with Fusen, these two songs share the same art cover and overall tone as well. With heavy upright bass, clav, and wood scraper, it's just another cheerful song. The lyrics aren't on the internet, I'll give it a 6 out of 10. Track number 17 is Jagoku Hen. Jagoku Hen, actually meaning hell screen, it really makes its presence known with all of the experimental noises, synths, 
and sound effects playing in the background of this track. Although being the worst song of this album personally, there are small parts that I enjoy and I savor when listening to the song. Since this track was the first song on the album to be one of the unreleased tracks I believe, it really takes you through a tumble, completely changing the previous tones and moods of this compilation. I would give it a 4 or a 5 out of 10. It would have to deal with my current mood. Track number 18 is My Monkey No Satogari. Next, this track is a pretty standard lounge rock song with heavy tom drums, upright bass, vibraphone, and electric guitar. Back to back with Jigoku Hen, these two are my least favorite songs in the compilation. I'll give this a 5 out of 10. Track number 19 is Public. Public, or Pub Rock, starts off as probably the softest song we've heard so far in this collection. The chorus picks it up, making it a swingy and pleasant surprise. With digital synth, upright bass again, reed organ, and percussion, this song gives us quite a treat. I adore the song, and happily for us, the last two songs after this are just as good. I'm giving Public an 8 out of 10. Track number 20 is Ding Ding Do Ron Ron. Like I said a few seconds ago, the last two songs of this compilation are some pretty strong finishers. The chorus of this song is so catchy that it gets stuck in my head all the time, with the background chorus of voices, guitar, super groovy bass, and whimsical strings that sound like they came straight out of a classic Disney movie, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. Final track number 21 is Me and My Monkey on the Moon. This being the last song really holds its own, being an entire beboppy 3-4 scat singing track. With the constantly changing bass and the constant wave of flute interludes and ride cymbal, you can't help but to bob your head. I'm giving this last song a 10 out of 10. In conclusion, I think this album would be a good choice for everybody. A part of me thinks that when I was just a little guy, I would have really liked it because of all the fun, childlike jazz and pop music. I hope you enjoyed this music review, and if you have any recommendations, feedback, or just want to say hi, leave a comment in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe and like the video if you want to see more of this stuff in the future, and I'll catch you later, everybody. Sayonara!